Hello guys and welcome to Liftoff. Tesla undoubtedly earned a huge achievement after they proved themselves to be able to make their cars some of the quickest in the market, also with the highest ranges. Do you reckon it be the end of the road? Elon Musk certainly doesn't. How can Tesla make their achievement even crazier? Today we'll discuss Tesla's updates to their high-performance EV motor. To begin, here's a fun fact. The electric car was created before the internal combustion engine. Inventors and their inventions were as cool as Instagram with its imagined social life in the early 1800s. Electricity paved the path for batteries, and electric motors were just a matter of time. Although slow by today's standards, technological processes was so quick at the time that attaching wheels to these electric motors driven by batteries occurred shortly after the mid-19th century. The first electric carriage was constructed by a British inventor, Robert Anderson while another Brit, Thomas Parker, is credited with producing the first production electric car in 1884, just a few years before Carl Benz and his petrol-powered motor wagon. The Americans weren't far behind on the other side of the Atlantic. A six-seater electric car capable of 23 kilometers an hour was created by William Morrison, an American chemist from Iowa. The year was 1890. New York City had a fleet of more than 60 electric taxis 10 years later with electric cars accounting for a third of all vehicles on the road at the time. For the time, such swift acceptance of new technology is astounding. A fresh chapter began as the century turned the page. The Ford Model T, as well as the concept of affordability, were introduced to America in 1908. A gasoline car would cost $650 US, while an electric car would cost $1,750 US, and you didn't need a calculator to make that decision. As the electric automobile entered a dark tunnel, advancements in electric vehicle technology took a secondary seat. The first big roadblock for the gasoline car came in the early 1970s. Oil scarcity, reliance on a few countries for supply, and of course rising prices. The California Air Resources Board adopted new transportation emission standards in the 1990s, signaling a shift toward addressing environmental issues. Leading players of the time in sunny California were flag bearers of the movement in the early 2000s, with cars like the Toyota Prius and Fisker Karma representing opposite ends of the hybrid car spectrum. One was cheaper, while the other was more aspired to, yet they both hinted at things to come and changes to occur. Electric cars have reached a point where they are reshaping the hypercar and motorsport performances landscape. These new hypercars have pushed the engineering envelope to the point that internal combustion engines have started to run out of steam. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Consider the Hennessy Venom F5 and the Bugatti Chiron, both of which rank atop the top speed hierarchy and do so without the use of electric propulsion. Combustion engines have taken nearly a century and a half to achieve these feats. However, all electric hypercars such as the Lotus Aviha and the Rimac Nevera have been produced in recent years and easily outperform the Venom and Chiron in terms of power. So how was Tesla able to achieve and inspire such a massive shift? Let's take a look at how Tesla electric drivetrain is built. Nikola Tesla invented the first induction motor roughly 100 years ago. The stator and the rotor are the two major components. The rotor is nothing more than a cluster of short-circuited conducting bars connected by end rings. The stator receives a three-phase AC power supply. A magnetic field is created by the three-phase AC in the coils, a four-pole magnetic field is produced by Tesla motors. To turn the rotor bars, a current is induced by the revolving magnetic field. The rotor speed, or RMF speed, in an induction motor frequently lags behind the rotor speed. Although an induction motor lacks brushes and permanent magnet, it's nevertheless quite strong. Induction motors are unique in that their rotational speed is determined by the frequency of the AC power supply. This means that the frequency of the power supply can be changed to change the pace at which the wheels revolve. This makes Tesla speed control simple and reliable. Tesla motors may spin at speed ranges from 0 to 18,000 RPM. The induction motor receives its power from the battery pack. However, because it generates DC power, the source must be converted to AC power before it can reach the motor. This is when the inverter enters the picture. The inversion not only converts DC to AC, but also adjusts the AC power frequency, allowing the motor speed to be controlled. The inverter may even regulate the motor output power by shifting the amplitude of the AC motor. In a sense, the inverter is the brain of the electric vehicle. 
Most people are surprised to learn that the battery packs are made up of large collections of common lithium-ion battery cells that are similar to those found in everyday life. To generate the requisite power to run the electric automobile, all of these cells are coupled in a series and parallel configuration. Glycol coolant is circulated through the metallic liner inner tubes that entwine their way between the cells. This is one of the principles that distinguish Tesla from other electric vehicle manufacturers. Essential cooling is ensured by using numerous small cells rather than a few large ones. As a result, thermal hotspots are reduced, resulting in an even temperature distribution across the numerous cells, resulting in longer battery pack life. All of these cells are organized into removable modules, totaling roughly 16 modules with around 7,000 cells. Tesla took the next step in their performance with the Model S Plaid. Many people were hoping for additional information regarding the new powertrain technology that Tesla developed under its Palladium program for the upgraded version of the electric car during the unveiling of the new Model S at the delivery ceremony in 2021. Surprisingly, the CEO didn't go into great detail about the new technology. He merely cited a brand new battery pack, for example, without providing any other information. He did, however, show off Tesla's new plaid carbon wrap motor and go over some of the specifics of the new technology, which allows for smaller, more powerful, and efficient motors. The motors are tiny enough to be carried by one person, but powerful enough to reach ridiculous RPMs. During the presentation, Musk briefly touched on the fact that this new motor is only possible thanks to a new machine that Tesla developed to be able to build it. Fiber is wound over a rotor at high tension load. The machine to do this was made by Tesla Automation. Carbon sleeves must put copper rotor in compression or it loosens at low temp due to differential thermal expansion. Preload is also helped for maintaining precise gap to stator, he explained. Musk also expanded on the advantages of the new motor over its predecessors. The main advantage of this is a much stronger EM field compared with a rotor that is held together by metal. Another advantage is that the rotor can go to higher RPM as carbon sleeve mostly stops copper rotor from expanding due to radial acceleration. In short, the new carbon-wrapped rotor allows Tesla to push the performance of its new motors to unprecedented heights. Musk said that Tesla's new motor is arguably the most advanced motor on Earth. In another set of tweets, he teased that the company is working on something even more powerful for the new Roadster. Car and Driver has tested the Model S Plaid from 30 to 50 miles per hour in 0.9 seconds and from 0 to 50 in 1 second flat. Tesla claims that the Plaid will be able to hit 200 miles per hour in the future, but our test car only made it up to 162. So you can imagine how insane automobile journalists will become once the Roadster is released. And that concludes today's episode. If you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification feature. Thanks for watching until the end, and I'll see you next time.